What is it about being from California and they always play Lady Gaga when you walk out? What is it? Is well, listen, uh, I'm really anxious to share with you today uh, a glimpse into the future of healthcare. Now, how many of you have heard the term disruption in a journal or a lay magazine? That's everywhere. You know, it's interesting, but when you hear the word disruption, the hard part is, is that as we say here in California, the term is really kind of squishy, right? It's kind of amorphous and nondescript. We really don't know for sure what it means most of the time. In fact, what's interesting is I did a study of 120 executives in healthcare and I asked them two very basic questions. I said, number one, what is disrupt, or how important is disruption to your organization? And the answer was, are you kidding me? Disruption is critical to our future. If we don't understand and, and leverage disruption, we will evaporate. And the next question was, what's disruption, right? Nobody knew how to answer the question, right? So it's kind of a unicorn in many ways. But the truth of the matter is, is that the future of healthcare can be described as disruptive. But the good news is, is that disruption is good if you understand its building blocks and leverage the incredible superpower that disruption provides. And I would like to offer up this definition. Disruption really is the rate and the depth of innovation. When you think about it, it's the way in which we leverage connection architecture, patient engagement, the way in which we leverage connected technologies and emerging technologies. It's the way in which we architect new models in healthcare. These are the things that are being accelerated to a point where it's really hard for us to understand them. So if disruption is about the speed and the depth of innovation, then it seems to me that we need to be innovators. We really need to leverage into the innate part of what makes us human, and that's to be an innovator. So if innovation is a new thing we have to learn, then we have to accept the fact that we are in fact innately innovative. And the other day I was at the university and a colleague of mine introduced me to somebody and they did something really weird and as my 12 year old daughter would say, icky, right? They introduced me as inventor. They go, hey, this is Nick Webb. He's an inventor. Now, I know it's late in the day, but do this for me. Look at the person next to you and shake their hand and say, hi, I'm an inventor. Let's do this together. Hi, I'm an inventor, come on. There we go. Beautiful. I have no reason to have you do that other than to share the pain of that moment with you guys. You're, you're welcome. But you know, it's interesting when you think about it, um, that's kind of like saying, hi, I'm a breather. Of course we're an inventor. It's what we do, right? We observe and we transmute those observations into the material equivalent of a thing or an experience or a solution or a clinical pathway or an intervention of some sort, right? That's what I believe is the greatest opportunity for this audience, is to leverage the genesis of that incredible philosophy of patient centrism and to drive it with innovation. So it begs the question, what is innovation? And in my upcoming book, The Innovation Mandate, after interviewing over 3,000 innovation experts, I finally kind of aggregated their definitions because none of them were the same. And here's what they told me, and here's what I believe the best definition is, is that innovation is simply nothing more than finding new ways to deliver value to your organization and to the patients or customers that you serve. It's really just that simple. And when you think about the future of healthcare, here are the trends that I think are gonna affect you in the biggest way. Hyper-consumerization. Now I know it's horrible to hear the term consumer when you're thinking about patients because you know they're coming to us for clinical and safe, efficacious care after all. But it turns out in a time of hyper-consumerization, if we don't leverage the power of experience design, we're gonna lose the opportunity to serve those patients. There is no question you can't find a hospital or a clinic of any size whatsoever that doesn't have a formal CX or PX strategy, meaning that they're looking at the patient's journey. They're understanding them beyond ethnography. They're looking at them in terms of the way in which they behave digitally through netnography. They're watching their journey across five well-defined touch points. They're understanding their personas across those five touch points. And as a result of that, they're delivering beautiful experiences. And in many cases, displacing 
other caregivers because their experience is like Amazon. The other issue that will affect us all in the next 10 years is the acceleration of disruption. You know, one thing I'd like you to consider is this, is that we all suffer from a condition that I like to call disruption dysphoria, meaning that it's so easy. I've been in healthcare for four decades. I remember my first job working with Star Surgical on the first foldable interocular lens. And I can remember the executive telling me, it, this is a burning platform, it's coming to an end. But it never did. In fact, it didn't even change that much. So it's easy for us to believe that the changes in healthcare are linear, they are not. So we have to accept the fact that disruption is somewhat sporadic, it's deep, and it's fast. The other thing that will affect you in a very, very big way is connection architecture. There is a reason why Apple and Google are fighting right now to own the patient as a digital node. They will own the patient as a digital node. By that mean their data signals a pulse oximetry, EEG, EKG, movement, gait, states of mind. Everything can easily be monitored through continuous monitoring, super cheap. These wearables will likely be in-ear technologies that allow us to easily access EEG data. We are going to turn patients, this is all good, this is not Orwellian and scary, we're going to turn them into digital nodes so that artificial machine, artificial intelligence can look at the meaning of the signals of the data off digital nodes. And what we can do from that is leverage anticipatory healthcare. I think it's more important even than genomics and pharma genomics. The other issue is the healthcare systems that you see today are going to have to change. And they're gonna change in a very positive and beautiful way. I think again, keep an eye on what Apple has recently done. They went from loving the idea of having a fitness watch to realizing the massive market opportunity of owning the patient's health. There is no doubt about it that the most profitable corporation in the world, the most profitable retailer, and some of their close uh, contenders, Google and Amazon, want to own the patient. And they're doing that through changing the way in which we engage patients, changing the technologies to be able to get more data. They will ultimately get to the point where you have really, really amazing levels of integration. Think about things like the decentralization of care. We're now dropping off complete bio-enabled technologies, granny pods, where they're completely customized to the unique convalescence needs of that particular patient, and they're on fire. But instead of doing that, they're fitting them with AI, immersive headwear. And I don't know if you've ever seen, experienced this, but it's so real. It's so real. And they're able to fly over the southern tip of the Great Barrier Reef and dive into the water and swim with beautiful tropical fish instead of looking at medicines being pumped into their veins. I believe that these kinds of things are impacting the quality of their life. I have to say that it is such an honor for me to be here today because I have learned so much from this community. I think it's honestly made me a better person and I appreciate the incredible opportunity to serve you guys today. Thank you.